Hello everyone, this is Xiaoling Ran from the School of Mechanical Engineering at the Burke Nanotechnology Center at Purdue University. I would like to thank Professor uh, Ji Ping Huang for inviting me to join this outstanding group of uh, speakers and talk about our work. Today I want to uh, uh, show and share some work of our uh, on machine learning assisted investigation of uh, phonon localization in uh, periodic thermal matter materials. Uh, before I go to the uh, business, I want to, of course, acknowledge uh, our group alumni who contributed to the work we talk about today, and the list of collaborators as well as the current group members. Uh, so some of the work has been sponsored by uh, EFOSR, National Science Foundation, DARPA, Cooling Technology Research Center, ONR at Purdue. So uh, this is the outline of my talk today. We're going to first uh, go through the <clears throat> phonon localization and the two phonon model in random multilayers, followed by uh, genetic algorithm maximize Anderson localization in random multilayers. Then uh, finish with uh, genetic algorithm driven discovery of unexpected thermal conductivity enhancement by disorder. Some of the motivation comes from uh, thermal electric applications where it can work as a power generator, refrigerator, or uh, cooling for electronics. As we all know that uh, to maximize ZT, we need to minimize the lattice thermal conductivity. So for that purpose, silver lattice has been uh, long considered as a promising candidate for reducing thermal conductivity because of the high density of interfaces. Uh, so indeed, uh, they show, usually show much lower thermal activity in the bulk phase. Uh, well, a few years ago, uh, the coherent transfer behavior has been uh, discovered and uh, investigated, such as a uh, Professor Gang Chen's group at MIT. They found that the thermal activity uh, will increase with uh, the number of periods. Another group, uh, a bit later, uh, they identify uh, the trend of thermal activity as a function of the interface density. So interestingly, there is a uh, minimum uh, uh, thermal activity occurring at a certain interface, so which confirmed the pre uh, er even earlier theoretical predictions. So uh, as you can see, uh, when you uh, start from bulk and increase the interface density, the thermal activity decreases as expected. However, when you pass the minimum thermal conductivity, the thermal VD uh, increases the gain at a higher interface density. So in both cases, we can see that um, if the period is small enough, the interfaces do not really scatter phonon effectively. In other words, that you know the phonon will travel through the interface without really seeing uh, interfaces. It's like uh, experiencing a new material. So we call this a coherent phonon. So the phases of the phonons are maintained uh, in this situation. Uh, so in that sense, the interfaces do not, do not really scatter uh, the phonons. How, so how can we uh, do it a better job and uh, find uh, much more room to suppress the phonon transport? So <clears throat> we started looking at the problem also uh, around that time and our proposal is the random model layer structure. So this was really inspired by the, uh, using random structures to localize electrons and the photons. So uh, the idea was pioneered by uh, Philip Anderson, who unfortunately passed away earlier this year, who made uh, you know tremendous contribution to to the community. So for the regime, uh, if the system is a, a you know, diffusive uh, regime, it will show like inversely proportional to uh, the lens, which means the conductance. Uh, however, uh, he kind of uh, uh, pioneered the theory of uh, localization, saying that uh, if the system is random, then the transmission will exponentially decay uh, with uh, adding the lens to the system. So that is localization, as we can see here. Uh, so the conductivity will be the conductance times the length. So electrons was discovered like more than half a century ago. For photons, 
uh, many groups look at it. And my when I was a PhD student, I also looked at this behavior and uh, predicted exponential decay for photons. But can we have a similar behavior for phonons? If that's the case, then we should be able to do much suppress the phonon transport. So uh, in a paper we published in 2014 in PRB, uh, we reported the results uh, between super lattices versus the random model layers, given the same number of density, uh, same number of interfaces or the interface density. Okay, we also uh, compare these two systems with a benchmark, which is a interface between two semi-infinite solid. So this is a uh, the situation where the phonons will see the interface. So it turns out that uh, in super lattice, of course, uh, the normal interface resistance, we, which we found later, is smaller than the uh, than the uh, uh, single interface between two uh, diffusive segments. So we get these thermal conductance from our AMD simulations, and we see that uh, uh, the conductance of the random model layer is smaller than the super lattice, which is uh, very promising. However, uh, we also found that uh, conductance of the random model layer does not really follow uh, the diffusion limit or the local localization limit. It actually decays uh, more rapidly than the diffusion, although the two converges at very long total lengths, which is uh, expected. On the other hand, uh, the G uh, decays more slowly than the lo localization, uh, because in this uh, uh, log scale plot, uh, the localization will show a uh, steep linear uh, decay. So this was surprising at that time because uh, phonons were either understood as a totally uh, coherent by, for example, uh, the Green's function approach, or uh, totally incoherent, assuming that each interface will scatter a phonon. Okay, so after quite some time of uh, thinking and debating, we came to realize that uh, the phonons cannot really be uh, treated as completely coherent or incoherent because there are so many frequencies and wavelengths of phonons, and some phonons uh, you know, can be localized while others cannot. So we have to uh, you know, treat them as that uh, they coexist. So with that concept, we develop uh, the two phonon model. So ideally, uh, we would like to treat um, each frequency uh, separately, but uh, it was pretty uh, uh, complicated at that moment and uh, we decided to divide into just the coherent and incoherent groups of phonons. Um, so we, are, we based our approach on the Landauer uh, method. So the conductance equal to the uh, ballistic conductance times uh, the factor lambda over lambda plus L. So you can imagine that uh, when the device lens is much smaller than the wavelengths, so this conductance will stay nearly a constant, which is a ballistic limit. Uh, on the other hand, if L becomes much larger than the lambda, the G will decay as 1 over L, which is a diffusive behavior. Uh, so we can recover both ballistic and the diffusive uh, limits. Now with this model, uh, we divide the phonons into incoherent and the coherent groups. So for the super lattice, uh, it's a summation of the incoherent and coherent phonon using the lambda approach. However, for uh, the random model layer, now the incoherent phonon contribute a similar way. A coherent phonon, because of randomness, now they can be localized. So uh, we, add, we added uh, um, exponential decay term to the contribution uh, of uh, coherent phonon in random model layer. Uh, we can see that uh, if the lens is, uh, infinite, uh, is very large, then uh, the current uh, coherent contribution uh, in the Ramal layer will diminish, so which give us a, a nice contrast between the two systems. So uh, with this, we are able to uh, fit uh, all these quantities, including our wavelength, uh, including our mean free pass, localization lens, and uh, ballistic conductance. So these are the two base curves, and now with that fitting, we figure out that uh, the coherent phonon contribution is. Uh, given by, uh, well, in the super lattice is given by this uh, blue curve with uh, up hollow triangles. Uh, and for the random model layer, we're able to isolate the uh, coherent phonon. So now it's indeed 
uh, a, a very fast exponential decay. So initially the conductance is not uh, small, uh, but it quickly diminishes to not be negligible compared to, to the other uh, contribution. So when uh, the total length is very large, the difference between the two will become a co coherent phonon contribution. We can then obtain the thermal activity uh, by multiplying L to the conductance. So here we can see for the super lattice, uh, it shows the ballistic behavior at the small total lens, and uh, then start to saturate to the diffuse safety uh, limit when the lens is very long. For a random model layer, at the beginning it also shows some ballistic behavior, and then quickly saturate to a constant value. So at the very long lens, uh, now we know the coherent phonons are totally suppressed in the random model layer, so it's a co incoherent phonon contribution. And the difference between the two systems now is a coherent phonon contribution. Now if we do the same feeding, uh, we're able to isolate uh, the coherent phonon contribution in the random model layer, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's here. So we zoom in at this part, you can see that uh, interestingly, initially it increases, uh, then reach a peak value, and then it decreases quickly, uh, diminish to zero. All right, so what happens here is at the beginning, uh, the ballistic effect is still important. The dominance is over the uh, localization behavior, so it still increases. But then uh, uh, at some point, it reaches maximum, and passing that point, the localization behavior starts to dominate the ballistic uh, behavior, so it decays uh, rapidly to zero. Now, this increase and then decrease uh, behavior is a very clear signature of uh, localization. Uh, we're going to go into a bit later uh, from some experiments. All right, we also did some uh, optimization uh, uh, of the random model layer, trying to see what's the mi minimum thermal conductivity what we can get. At that time, we did the manual, which is to manually vary uh, the parameters. So indeed, in the simulation, we can see uh, the super lattice shows a minimum thermal activity at a certain uh, period length. Well, for uh, the super lattice with, uh, with rough interfaces, uh, it doesn't show this minimum. It keeps uh, decreasing all right? because of the additional interfacial resistance. Well, what is interesting is uh, for the random model layer, the thermal activity can be lower than the rough super lattice and can even go below the random all the way limit. So which is very interesting because the coherent phonons are totally uh, localized. We also look into uh, two dimensional systems, which is uh, the uh, graphene nano mesh. So compared to uh, periodic graphene nano mesh, the random nano mesh shows a reduced decay by 20 to 40 percent. Uh, so this reduction uh, is not as significant as uh, the 1D case we have seen, but at the same time is not negligible either. There has, has been uh, some interesting uh, recent developments along this line, um, such as a uh, Jason's group at the Tongji University, they look at the 2D system and, uh, and also see uh, reduced thermal activity uh, in uh, disordered porous structures. At the same time, uh, they also look at uh, the wavelengths or the frequency dependent transmission function. So push uh, from our two phonon model now to a uh, spectral model, which yield much more insights into that. Now another group uh, did uh, a similar study on silicon germanium super lattice and uh, up here super lattices and uh, they looked into the spectral uh, transmission function behavior to explain uh, the wavelength dependent um, physics as well. Okay, now let's go to the second part, the genetic algorithm maximize Anderson localization in uh, random model layers. So now, uh, conceptually, we have shown that the uh, random model layer can reduce thermal activity uh, than super lattice. But the natural question is, what's the, the lower limit? 
if we want to get to uh, study that, we are facing a very large design space because uh, you know the each atomic layer we can assign material A or material B. So even for like a 20 nanometer total lens system, uh, the total population is possible is 30 billion, right? That's really impractical to simulate them one by one. Okay, another problem associated with uh, this manual design or intuitive uh, driven design, you might easily um, be trapped uh, at a local maximum or local minimum if, you know, uh, based on the known physics and uh, the space you can, are, you're able to search. But uh, the global maximum or minimum may be well being somewhere else. So how to deal with that? And uh, recently there are exciting applications of machine learning methods uh, using uh, uh, informatics. So a large amount of data may be available from experiment or computational studies. Such as here we've shown a lot of studies, especially from simulations, although uh, they may be still be fairly expensive, but uh, uh, they are much more economic than experiment data. And how can we build a database and uh, apply data science approaches to extract useful information for us? Uh, so uh, recently there have been uh, quite a few studies using machine learning on thermal transport, for example, optimization of a nanoparticle size uh, for minimum thermal activity from Austin Minish uh, group and uh, um, um, Hang Zhang. So uh, this is a uh, high throughput screening of uh, compound materials uh, for, uh, for thermal activity. And this work looked at uh, uh, the interfacial thermal resistance uh, for various materials. And this is a um, Jun Xiaomi's group uh, with uh, Shen Hongji. Uh, they look at the optimization of interfaces for target thermal conductances using machine learning. Okay, so these methods are uh, very powerful. There are a few open questions and challenges. Uh, the data sets are still small. They are still expensive compared to other applications like image processing and language modeling. Um, and our challenge is that uh, after machine learning tells you the optimized results, how to discover physics, especially new physics that uh, uh, that are impossible without machine learning. Also, how to find exceptions. That's a really important uh, scenario to push the science. Right? Um, so if we can overcome these uh, challenges, I think the machine learning will enable us much more power uh, to, uh, for scientific studies. So these are the results. Here we can see um, we start from initial uh, structure, which is a very bad structure. I go to the 10th generation, you see more interfaces, 20th generation, 30th generation, 40th generation, and the uh, 50th generation, we're able to arrive at the final optimized uh, random model layer structure. So uh, with the results, we want to understand uh, the physics. Uh, so this needs to sound like a human uh, intervention in the, in the process. Now, we would imagine that uh, <clears throat> since super lattice shows a minimum thermal activity, if we do a manual search, uh, we would play things around at the minimum, right? So we did that, and the manual search will give you the lowest thermal activity here. But our scenario algorithm actually arrived at the lowest thermal activity at a smaller period, uh, which is surprising to us. Then we, we kind of uh, look at the different regimes, realize that uh, this point is when the coherence starts to be important, but uh, in order to localize phonons, you need better and better coherence. So that's why it uh, pushes uh, the period to a smaller value that when coherence can increase and then that can promote more localization. But after uh, this point, if you push to smaller period, thermal activity increases again because uh, there's a smaller room for you to uh, uh, enable sufficient randomness, okay? So that's a really interesting interplay between the factors.
So uh, there have been some interesting uh, experimental evidence for localization published recently, uh, again from Gang Chen's group. They embedded uh, erbium arsenide uh, islands into uh, gallium arsenide, aluminum arsenide super lattices, and they observed this uh, initial increase uh, with uh, the total length and then decrease. So this is a clear uh, signature of uh, localization. And uh, very recently, uh, Professor um, Ren Hu and uh, Jun Xiaomi's group, they uh, did this uh, random model layer structures and uh, observed much reduced thermal activity compared to periodic super lattice. This is a nice work. So, so far we have used all the time to talk about that randomness can uh, reduce thermal activity. So based on the spirit of uh, finding uh, exceptions, we ask ourselves the question, does randomness always reduce K? Are there any exceptions? Actually, interestingly, uh, Professor Nomura's group at the University of Tokyo, they look at the ordered versus the disordered silicon nanoporous membranes. And they find that the thermal activity of disordered membrane is higher than the ordered membrane which is a kind of surprising. So uh, they explain this uh, with the uh, band gaps of um, uh, the phalonic crystal. So in the uh, orders, uh, order membrane, uh, there is a stop band which suppresses the phonon transport. Well, this stop band uh, can be uh, lifted uh, when disorder is introduced. So uh, any, uh, anyway, the physics behind uh, this uh, disorder versus order system still very intriguing. We wonder, uh, is there any role of uh, localization? So we look at um, uh, the, another uh, disorder structure, graphene nano mesh, and um, try to simulate and uh, search for exceptions. So uh, this is our system. We allow the nanopore to move with its own cell to avoid any overlap. And our MD simulation uncertainty is very small, allowing us to get fairly uh, good uh, signal to uh, noise reading. So we first done uh, the manual search, starting from the periodic structure, by shifting the pores in the uh, X direction, in the Y direction, or in both X and Y directions. So we already see actually reduced thermal activity and didn't find any uh, enhanced the highest amount of is still 6% 6, 6 smaller in the periodic case. Then we uh, uh, employ this uh, two-step uh, machine learning enabled search. We use the T uh, BT simulation to uh, do the fast pre-screening because the speed is much faster than the MD simulation. Then uh, if promising results are uh, found from the BT simulation, then we run AEMD simulation to check whether the MIP is indeed higher from higher than the uh, periodic pros case. This slide shows how the GA search results look like as a function of the generation for the displacement along the X and the Y direction for the nanopores. Now for both cases, we're able to successfully discovered the unexpected thermal activity enhancement compared to periodic uh, horror structure. Uh, we got 8% enhancement and the 5% enhancement for the X and the Y displacement respectively. So these are higher than our uncertainty level. And uh, so these are true enhancement. Now it comes to the time uh, how to understand our finding, why disorder here can enhance the thermal activity. So uh, we inf inspected the structures with the highest thermal activity uh, for the X displacement, Y displacement, as well as the lowest thermal activity with Y displacement, uh, also the original periodic structure. So we came to realize that for the highest X, we kind of offset uh, the pores along the X so that uh, the you know, frontal area, the phone line will experience become more uniform. So that's related to the shape factor. Okay. Also, uh, another concept might be helpful, which is the channel factor for ballistic transport. It describes, you know, how wide the channel is for the ballistic phone lines to 
uh, shoot through without uh, being blocked. So uh, we look at these two factors, then we uh, check the effectiveness of these two factors, use the least square regression analysis uh, through uh, uh, using the 12 prototypical uh, functions. So uh, eventually, we did find pretty good correlations uh, with the BTE calculated K as well as MD computed K. So the final feeding function, so finally, the thermal activity uh, is written as a function of the, the, the two uh, descriptors in this way. So when we compare structure one versus the two, we found that the shape factor of one is smaller than two because two, uh, the pores are more uh, evenly distributed along the X direction. So the phonons will see a more uniform cross-section area available and that's uh, indicating a higher uh, shape factor. Uh, so the thermal activity of the structure two is larger than uh, one. Uh, when we look at the channel factor, we can see that the channel factor of one is higher than two because the two, uh, uh, a lot of channels being blocked by the poor arrangement, such as thermal activity uh, is higher than two. So um, uh, eventually we kind of summarize the results. Uh, the, if there's more spread in X, uh, it leads to uh, higher thermal activity. Right. If there is more spread in Y, uh, the channel factor decreases and leads to a reduced uh, thermal connectivity. So, uh, which means that in this case, uh, if these two factors work together to overcome the effect of localization, then the thermal activity can be enhanced in, a, in, in the uh, exceptional way. Now, uh, let me summarize my talk today. So the take home message is really the thermal science can be driven by exceptions. Recall early on the particle behavior of phonons were well studied, well understood. Then uh, the wave nature of the transport, it was an exception. So now we know uh, because of the wave behavior of phonons, we can have a phonon localization in these random model layers. Then when we try to optimize the random model layers for the lowest activity, we find that the structure uh, features were also exceptional. The uh, you know, period lens as well as the degree of randomness, they were not as expected uh, for us to get the lowest thermal activity. And finally, we can jump out of this localization, ask ourselves, um, can randomness ever enhance the thermal activity? And then we realize that uh, you know shape factors and channel factors can dominate the effect of, uh, of localization and they enhance the thermal activity, of course, in rare cases. All right, so uh, hopefully we can uh, discover one exception over another in the future to uh, push the thermal science uh, forward in the future.